Hello and welcome to this Facebook live chat. Uh, I'm Siddharth Bhardarajan, uh, a founding editor at The Wire, and uh, joining me today is Harsh Mandar, uh, former IS officer, uh, human rights activist, well known author, and somebody who has uh, been following the Ishra Jahan case very closely, and that, in fact, is the subject for our discussion. Uh, many of you would have seen the rather sensational story in the Indian Express earlier this week. Uh, it's one of those scoops that um, is uh, at one level completely unbelievable in terms of the way in which it <laughs> fell into the journalist's lap. So you have, uh, you have Sadiq Datta of the Indian Express who calls up uh, a senior Home Ministry official, B.K. Prasad, uh, to discuss uh, a completely different issue. Uh, he calls him up to discuss the, uh, the issuing of a visa to a Chinese dissident and its subsequent withdrawal by the government of India. And while uh, he has Mr. Prasad on the line, Mr. Prasad gets a call uh, on another phone and puts <laughs> Sagnik on hold. Now, unknown to Mr. Prasad, uh, the Indian Express reporter did uh, or was doing what many journalists do in order to ensure that uh, the quotes that they use from an official are accurate. He was recording the, the telephone call. Uh, and uh, as a result, the conversation that Mr. Prasad was having with uh, another official on the other line um, Mr. Prasad's part of it got recorded, got captured by um, Sagnik Datta, the Indian Express reporter's uh, recording device. And uh, the contents of that conversation were uh, pretty explosive. The Express uh, has obviously uh, done its due diligence uh, and tried to piece together other parts of uh, the story. And when they finally decided to go public a few, few days ago, uh, it uh, really put the Home Ministry, the concerned official, and of course the BJP which had been very aggressive on the Ishrat Jahan so-called missing affidavit case uh, on the back foot. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, the phone call provided convincing evidence of how this official of the Home Ministry, who was tasked with the job of investigating the location of certain case papers that the government said have gone missing, uh, how this gentleman uh, far from conducting the kind of uh, open and, uh, and and precise investigation, uh, is captured on, on, on telephone uh, on this telephone call, actually tutoring uh, one of the officials. So he asks the official uh, uh, that uh, he tells the official, "Look, I will ask you, have you ever seen this paper?" And you will say, "No, I have not." Uh, so in a way, uh, very clear evidence that at least as far as this one person who was being going to be questioned. Uh, the uh, inquiry being conducted by the Home Ministry was uh, really quite compromised. Uh, so as I said, uh, we would like to explore the ramifications uh, of the Indian Express story and of course the wider issues of uh, the Ishtar Jahan case with Harsh Mandar, who uh, you wrote a piece for us on The Wire, uh, you of course studied this case and written about it extensively. How would you uh, assess the significance of the uh, Prasad revelation, the idea that the fact that he is caught on tape tutoring a witness. How do we make sense of this? See, the clumsiness of it, of course, is, is, is uh, spectacular and, and, and amusing. Uh, but, uh, but, the, but the subject itself uh, is, is something that causes a lot of worry. Uh, but I think that, you know, just penetrating, piercing right through. Uh, all of this is a kind of smoke screen, red headings being thrown here, you know, uh, uh, diversionary tactics here and there. What is the core question? The core question is that a 19-year-old girl was uh, was killed. Uh, and uh, in, 2004. in 2004, yeah. it was claimed that she was uh, a suicide bomber, an LET terrorist who had come in to kill Mr. Narendra Modi along with uh, three other terrorists. And, and she was killed. Uh, and uh, it, it became spectacular news. Uh, the implications was A, that Mr. Modi was in continuous threat and B, that there were these suicide bombers sort of uh, zeroing in on him and that the intelligence, uh, the local intelligence, the na national intelligence as it happened had got wind of this and they, uh, and they uh, caught them in time. Uh, they were trying to arrest them and, and the car, uh, you know, was moving with these three, uh, four terrorists and there was a shootout and finally uh, they had no option except to kill the four people in this shootout. This was the official version of it. It was a story that, uh, uh, that, that 
many people were willing to buy uh, initially. And, and it was reported extensively. It, it was reported uh, extensively. And this took journalists uh, to the spot. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and what has tended to happen is that whenever uh, you know, uh, cases of alleged terror are there, for some reason, journalists are expected to, uh, uh, to uh, suspend all kinds of, of, of uh, you know, uh, further disbelief. Uh, disbelief yeah, yeah. Suspend disbelief yeah. and to go with the official version and to not do so is somehow unpatriotic and so on. So people have tended in this case and in many such cases to actually go with the official version. And I think it might have just, just stayed there. Uh, except, uh, except for, on, on the one hand, uh, uh, the family's story of how it has fought for justice uh, with human rights defenders and so on is, is, is a very uh, inspiring one. But, you know, uh, just stepping back a little bit, uh, since I've got to know the family, uh, just imagine a situation where uh, you have a young, uh, you know, she's, uh, the father died uh, early, uh, the family was in great poverty, this is a suburb largely of Muslims, uh, working class suburb of Bombay, Mumbra, and uh, the mother is trying really hard to keep, uh, to provide for the family. Uh, and as some, uh, you know, uh, in every family, or in many families, somebody uh, emerges who, who, who goes that extra step and she's, she was clearly like almost the, the principal bread earner for the family at the age of 19 and she used to do a lot of tuition, she used to go to college uh, and she would get tuitions etc. Summer vacation was a time when uh, tuitions uh, dry up because uh, students stop coming. So there was a, a great crisis of money so somebody comes uh, and offers a, a job which requires some degree of travel outside. Uh, people ask later, how did a, you know, uh, in a Muslim, Orthodox Muslim family, how did they allow? But there is a, a certain context in which uh, it's really hard to, uh, to make ends meet. Yes. And so she, uh, she went in and was out for 10 days and suddenly the family is sitting. Nobody knew in the family. They didn't have mobile phones. Uh, they didn't have television. Uh, and uh, they're sitting in the evening uh, after, uh, and, uh, after the uh, killings have happened. And a group of journalists come into the, their house and actually uh, make out that the family knows nothing. And they're really embarrassed, but they need a, a photograph of the girl, uh, which they want to flash on television. And finally, they, they, they tell, tell them that we've come from her college and we need a passport photograph, which the family gives. And that's what we started seeing on television. Right. And uh, it was only around 9 in the evening that they finally sort of broke the news and said uh, you know, that... She's been killed. She's a terrorist, uh, 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 Modi, and so on. I mean, the younger children said they hadn't even heard of Modi. They didn't know what terrorism was, uh, and and so on. And the shock of that. And then by nine o'clock, uh, the the whole police comes in. The house is sealed, or everything is this thing. And and then the mother goes, and she finally is is given the body, and then they. Uh, and for three or four years, you're completely, uh, you know, uh, 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 stigmatized as a family because. You know, within her community as well, within, within, within the local, among the local residents of Mumbra? Uh, no, they were frightened. In fact, they were saying that what was remarkable was that, that when they came back with the body, there were thousands of people at the funeral. Because they knew the girl to the, be uh, 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 an uh, innocent, innocent exactly, person. Exactly. But after that, the, you know, anyone would reach out to them in any kind of way, uh, the police would land up. And so people started shunning any kind of contact with them, except for two or three people who held out. They were completely isolated. And then you have this uh, an unknown junior uh, judge uh, called Tamang. And you see what happens is… Magistrate a, uh, in Ahmedabad. Magistrate right. in Ahmedabad right. of Sikkimese origin and, uh, and unknown. And so simply, I mean, and since I've worked within the system, I, you know, the extraordinary thing is that somewhere in the middle of everything else, you, you get somebody who believes in his, his or her sense of duty uh, above all. And see, every single uh, alleged encounter is followed up by uh, a, a routine, what, what tends to be a routine uh, investigation by a magistrate, who almost in 99% of the cases just upholds the police story, uh, upholds the police yeah. story and says it was an encounter, etc. And doesn't sort of, and that was what this man was expected to do. Nobody even, uh, I, I guess, bothered to try to sort of uh, tutor him because he was expected to do what magistrates normally do and should not do. 
and this is a man who who went through the evidence carefully and it came up with a with what was a sensational report and he he has given evidence you know you know uh, for instance uh, the size of 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 the hole where the bullet pierces from the front and the back and you know if it's close up there's a certain kind of uh uh size of the hole and and so on so what he established without any doubt was that these people were already in custody perhaps separately perhaps together and that they were brought to the spot and they were killed at close range right. uh, uh and that uh, uh the, the and and then uh, uh the bullets that were fired i mean the 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 the, the claim that uh they were on, this was only defensive fire not a single person was injured on on the side of the police that it was basically uh, i mean i think even today and, and and that's where the smoke screen the whole uh and all of these red headings is there is that i think it is incontrovertible even today mm. that it was a fake encounter right. which all which in, included three men but i think that what 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 stirred the conscience of many people yes. across the country was that it was also about this 19 year old girl now uh so i think that what what i mean i'm not, uh, it's quite clear that what the government is trying to do is to divert public attention by saying that the girl was a terrorist now i think that the two things and and, and also so i I'll just interrupt you yeah. we have a question on this point by yeah. gorov gorov deka who says that the family insists that isha jahan is not a terrorist mm. the bjp says she is yeah. and the congress has vacillated mm. uh is this really a relevant question however is what he wants to know given that under the indian law hmm. uh it is not legal to kill somebody in custody yeah. so what is are we then asking the wrong question i think gorov has just uh, you know ha- has has actually said exactly what i wanted okay. to say is that the point is that this is not a relevant question the point is it's it's simply like a question like if a woman is being you know it comes up with 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 a claim that she's been raped to say that she has some kind of a a, a background where she is of loose character etc as people try to do is irrelevant did she give consent at that point of time or not is is the question and and we should not allow ourselves to be diverted in this case it, the question is irrelevant about whether she was a terrorist or not but on the other hand Uh, imagine that you belong to uh, uh, i mean you, the, she's a daughter in your household and and is carrying this the stigma mm. uh, the worst kind of stigma possible uh, and uh, so naturally the family is exercised in an, is trying to prove her innocence uh, from from the fact that she's uh, she's charged with terror the facts are also interesting because the total number I mean, uh, satish shah who is one of the police officers who's been speaking about this and many others the fact is that that her total contact with the the, the person uh, with uh, javed uh, pille was 45 days of which 35 days uh, her college attendance records show that she was in college during those those days so the total amount of time that she was actually in contact with this person start to finish was 10 days and it's impossible for a person to be radicalized uh, trained as a suicide bomber and got all ready and taken on a mission all in the space of 10 days and so it is and, and for many other reasons the story doesn't hold together and uh, and i think that uh, uh, the claim that mr gopal pille suddenly made or somebody else makes from time to time or david headley and his sort of what uh, multiple choice uh, sort of response is is all attempts at diverting attention from the enormous crime that is confronting us that uh, four people including one uh, 30 19 year old woman was killed in cold blood by police officials with an intelligence officer and a couple of intelligence officers involved i think that's the story and that's a story that we we should not allow uh, you know uh, uh, all of these various red headings uh, uh, and of which the latest was that uh, mr chandram changed his affidavit and and he did it in some malified fashion he says yes i did change my affidavit because initially uh, he they went along with the story that that uh, she was a terrorist but later evidence showed that she had she was not but whatever if they were politically motivated if they were not politically motivated whether they should have vacillated or not is is matters that i think are interesting but not relevant to the core question Uh now just to come back to uh, Mr Prasad mm. uh essentially the government says that um, the government began about 3 or 4 months ago right 
to make uh, a lot of noise about the fact that Mr. Chidambaram changed his affidavit and that the Home Ministry, which had initially said um, there was evidence on file mm. to, uh, the, uh, that indicated Ishra Jahan was a terrorist, revised that uh, two or three months later and they said this was politically motivated. When they tried to um, take this argument forward, they then said certain documents particularly the exchange of letters between the MHA mm -hmm. and the Attorney General have gone missing. The suggestion was that these documents in some ways compromises Chidambaram's position and maybe Chidambaram had a hand in them disappearing. I don't know quite frankly what the government's claim was, but they tasked Mr. Prasad with, yeah. with finding those papers. Now, if in fact those papers have something that is damaging to the Congress and which burnish or buttress what the BGP is saying, mm. uh, why would Prasad, as per that telephone call, not appear to be overly keen to find those papers or to get to the bottom of the story. Unless, unless <laughs> the idea is simply to keep this ball in play. Yeah, I have a feeling it is just simply to to keep the uh, you know you know to to give you some uh, give the public some kind of an impression that something suspicious had had happened. Since that Ishad Jahan was a terrorist, which Mr. Chidambaram chose to overrule, yes. uh, or. Or what? I don't know. Right. So, I mean, so let us assume that there was a set of papers and Mr. Chidambaram was given advice that she was a terrorist initially, that later that she wasn't or she wasn't given this advice. And his, in his judgment, he, he revised his opinion and decided to give a fresh yes. affidavit. Let's assume that, that the BJP is correct, that there was, uh, you know, that there was a set of papers. So what? I mean, what does that prove? I, I mean, I think it does prove that the Congress has continuously been complicit, you know, in uh, in vacillating and not taking a clear stand in, on the side of justice in matters of this kind. Right. And it takes positions of one kind and, and the other. Fair enough, that is true. Uh, and uh, and but how does that change the central question that uh, that uh, that a young girl of 19 was killed in cold blood and it and and, and dubbed to be a terrorist right. when she when there's no evidence right. so, so just to pick up the narrative from Tamang's report right. the Gujarat government challenged it the high court stated mm -hmm. there was subsequently an SIT the CBI got involved uh, where do matters stand now in legal terms to my mind I'm I'm, I'm, I'm also uh, I, I feel that uh, see uh, an inquiry report is not in itself uh, you cannot pronounce punishment I mean it is the responsibility uh, of the state administration uh, to take action for which the SIT was was constituted. The SIT also supported a lot of uh, of of what uh, Mr. Tamang came forward with. So I think that that uh, that uh, that we need to see the officers concerned punished for for murder, and we have to see that pursued. Uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with with commitment if we want to prevent the recurrence of events of this kind. Right. And there's no evidence of that happening. There's very little chance in the present regime, either in Gujarat or in Delhi, for that to happen. Okay. Hmm. Well, uh, before I turn to other questions that came by email earlier, um, uh, you know, you're welcome on Facebook to post your questions um, via a comment and uh, my colleague will uh, then read them out to me. I think you have a few questions, yeah. so why don't you, why don't you try and tell us yeah. about There's this question by Mr. Srinivas Rao. He asked, uh, where, why was civil society not able to decisively get her justice? And do you think our politicians, especially Congress, was serious about getting justice for her? So has civil society uh, somehow failed her and has the Congress party uh, been uh, also complicit in the denial of justice? I think that's. Uh, I think the Congress Party has been complicit in uh, in not being unambiguous in uh, and, 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 and on the side of justice, uh, and it is. It should be irrelevant that she belong. She was a Muslim or she was a Hindu or she was. Uh, I mean, it, 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 we, the Congress Party uh, and, and and the government in power should have pursued the case with far more forthrightness, especially after Mr. Tamang's report, uh, than it did. I think civil society has been, you know, uh, there have been segments of civil society, uh, people like uh, Mr. Mukul Sinha and uh, Vrinda Grover, are lawyers who have pursued the case with 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 a great deal. And Vrinda is counsel for the family, right? Counsel, counsel, Shabhi 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 Mahkosa, right, counsel yeah. for the family, and have stood by them and have fought the case. Um, but you you must. You must understand that fighting these cases, and you know, I, and this morning I was writing uh, a, a review of the 
judgment uh, given on in, in the case of the Gulberg case as well. Uh, uh, I, I mean, the fault you, you are confronting large, pervasive institutional bias uh, in matters of this kind. And civil society, I think, by taking the side, the unpopular side of, uh, of, of what is perceived to be justice, is playing its role. Right. Uh, and uh, but uh, it, it's not as if they will always get, okay. uh, uh, you know, uh, accomplish right, exactly. the outcomes exactly. because you're confronting very powerful forces, very powerful right. forces uh, politically powerful pos forces. But I would also say a larger uh, societal uh, bias yeah. and institutional bias. Fair so right. so all of these coming together exactly. yeah. makes it quite formidable. Mm. Uh, what do we have next, Akhil? Uh, we have a question from Mr. Raj. Uh, he says the DM who wrote the first report is a hero. What happened to him? So what happened to Mr. Tamang? Raj wants to know. Uh, yeah, well, Mr. Tamang is, <laughs> you know, interestingly, he's he's uh, he's obviously not popular. I'm not I'm, I'm not even followed his career, and I think that. Uh, 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 you know, I can't imagine the report did him much good. <laughs> no, no, he wouldn't have done him much good. I have a feeling, I mean, I, I have an ambition and uh, we should do it perhaps together. I feel that there are certain heroes from within the system. There's Rahul Sharma, there's Tamang. Right. There's so Rahul uh, Sharma was the Gujarat IPS officer who, who actually did his duty during the 2002 uh, 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 riots uh, and saved, saved people. Yes. Saved people, yeah. but after that he did something even more remarkable. What he did was that in, as a punishment, because he saved lives, he was put into this uh, routine position, I mean this sideline position of being in the police control room. But in those three weeks, he saw how ministers and so on were sitting in the control room and actually organizing the riots. And he realized, because he was an engineer by training, uh, and now we all know it, but at that time he realized that the phone records would be crucial to, to, to uh, as evidence. So he collected the phone records of those three weeks and that became crucial evidence. And he's been punished throughout his the rest of his career and he's right. finally quit. But he has no regrets, and I met him recently, and he said I would not change anything and I, right. uh, the cause. Right. So heroes like him or Taman yeah. or, or or the just uh, uh, the, the, the judge who passed the uh, passed the order in the Naroda Patia case, Jotsna, Jotsna Yagnik. Jotsna yeah. Yagnik. Yeah. These are people whom I think yeah. we need. Or Rohini Salyan, the prosecutor. Or, or Rohini Salyan, yeah. the yeah. Pro yeah. prosecutor, uh, him and Karkare. Yes. I, feel, I have a feeling that we must uh, recognize and right. follow up right. and I think they are heroes, the unsung heroes yeah. which are holding secular democracy and the rule of law in this country together despite uh, uh, you know, all the, uh, the power of institutional bias right. that I speak right. about. So Raj, that was a great question and definitely uh, speaking on behalf of the why, we will try to give you a fuller answer about, <laughs> about, uh, about, about Mr. Tamang. Yeah, next uh, question. We have a question from Franklin Joseph. Why was Ishra tagged a terrorist all this while? Mm. Isn't this a direct contempt of the judicial authorities or is it not in the interest of the people accused and the people in charge of then ruling party in Gujarat? So Franklin sees a bias in the tagging, but let, 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 me, let me buttress this question. Yes. Because uh, those who call Ishrat a terrorist lean heavily on the claim briefly made and subsequently retracted mm. by the lashkar e -Tayaba on their website where they refer to her as a female Mujahid, yes, etc, yes, etc. Yes. What's your sense of uh, why the LET would have said that if in fact she had no connection to them at all? I mean, you, you know that terror, uh, terrorist organizations like to take credit for sensational crimes and uh, and so they behave in, uh, you know, uh, we've seen the re recent killing in Orlando and, you know, whether right. they were involved or not and so on. I think that is less important. I think more important is that the ruling establishment uh, in Gujarat, less uh, unsurprisingly, but in Delhi itself initially, was happy to go along with the story that it was a genuine encounter uh, 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 in which the lives of real terrorists were taken in self-defense right. uh, when they were trying to kill policemen. Uh, and, and I think that... And that as part of the, the wider plan of trying to kill... Uh, uh, the, the no, 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 no. The so the fact, I mean, for, me, for me the question is how, why, why did the central government buy that story to start with? And subsequently... So the government had changed by then also, right? Yeah, it, it, was, it, it was then it, the UP in the center. In the UP at the center, 
uh, and the change affidavit was basically uh, the first affidavit uh, did buy that yes. story yeah. and then later it changed uh, it, its version but it didn't follow through uh, systematically i have a feeling that uh, you know as a, as a larger answer to your question how do we live in in the public conscience with crimes of this kind and we can do so only when we create some kind of a rationale and to 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 take the story uh, again to the gulberg which recently happened what has the judge said the judge has said that yes a mob did kill uh, esan jafri and so on but but the mob was there was no conspiracy it came spontaneously they were angry because of the killing of the uh, uh, the killing of uh, people on the train and esan jafri aggravated matters by shooting at the mob and so on so you're creating a you 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 kind of creating a scenario in which the basic crime cannot be justified but you create a rationale for it around it and that is why uh, making her a terrorist was important right. so we have a question from vishesh guru uh, what of the men who accompanied ishrat were their antecedents antecedents ever verified a standard refrain from the right has been to question what she was doing with terrorists could you please clarify on this so who were these other people we know jitesh pille his father has been agitated about it but yeah. who are these other two uh, see the other two so there's no evidence to date that those other two people had anything to do with ishra jahan at all yeah. and whether they were there uh, in the first place i mean what appears to have happened and and it's hard to be proved finally is that those two men were people with some kind of a uh, 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 background in terrorism who were uh, caught separately and uh, and were in custody already yeah. and then these two people were caught in. and uh, about uh, pille and javed uh, the evidence is getting murky i mean i don't think the story is is absolutely clear right. the question then is what was isha jahan doing with them some people say he may have been an informer actually he may have been an informer right. he might have been i mean nobody is very clear but right. he was not certainly a person who was above board in 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 his uh, in in his yeah. work i mean a lot of irregular activities what, what, fake what, what, passports uh, so yeah. so was sarhabuddin for instance right. who was killed he right. was also a petty criminal right. but whether you are a petty criminal or you are a major criminal or you are uh, a terrorist does not justify being killed in cold blood what was ishra doing with them I mean, that's really the story which i find very poignant where where actually uh, uh, a family that uh, you know uh, w- w- without a uh, 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 the, uh, the male head of the family suddenly dying. Mm-hmm. The family trying to uh, put 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 life together. A 19-year-old girl trying to support uh, in any way possible goes off with this man. Now, uh, one of them, I mean, I'm I'm really disappointed. I, I ha- had regard for the Home Secretary, Mr. Pille, uh, and uh, w- when he made the statement about her being a terrorist, now I think uh, after all of these years again. was bad enough but then he also made a statement about uh, the, the the hotel records showing that she was sleeping in the same room as uh, uh, as uh, as javed and i think that is so utterly irrelevant firstly to the question of whether she was a terrorist it's sort of how you stigmatize uh, w- a working young working woman and uh, you know whether those hotel records exist whether they were true or not the fact that you try to bring in these kinds of names is basically to tarnish the reputation of a young woman who has been killed in cold cold blood un, uh, uh, almost uh, un, un, undoubtedly uh, by uh, if she's not a terrorist then she's sort of doing something inappropriate otherwise mr pillay seems to have uh, been taking contradictory stands as well i mean mm. when we were researching this topic we found a statement from him from a couple of years ago actually mm. to, before the government changed but after he had retired mm. statement from guwahati where he actually uh, endorsed the view that there was no evidence that ishra jahan was a terrorist correct, yeah. so i yeah i i absolutely am amazed because he's a person who's had a reputation for being very upright right and i do find this vacillation right. uh, unexplainable right, mm. right. Uh, let, let's take a step back and assume for a minute mm. that the that the tawang report the sit findings and the cbi's charge sheet are are valid and that the encounter was a fake one uh what's the i mean what's the scenario going on here i mean you have a situation where the police or the ib already have two supposedly pakistani uh terrorists in custody mm. uh they bring them together yeah with ishrat and uh, and javed we don't know again the circumstances why Ishrat and Javed were uh, were traveling together mm. but they're brought together and shown as part of one plot what's the motivation i mean we know that encounters happen all the time mm. 
usually they happen in a context where the police uh, is in a situation they would rather not deal with uh, the trouble of charge sheeting and going through a trial. And in many ways, the appeal to the middle class prejudice that the Indian legal system is too soft on terrorists or better to eliminate yeah. them, etc. But why would they want to do this complex operation where you bring two guys, bring them together with Ishrat Jahan, and then stage manage and then claim a plot to kill the CM? Yeah. See, I think you know one view is it's very hard to speculate. I mean, my that my guess is as good as yours yeah. or, or or the readers, but. Uh, Possibly Ishrat Jahan was sort of uh, uh, unintended, uh, what is it called? Uh, collateral damage. Co collateral damage. I mean, that is a possibility. Uh, that they were uh, after Javed and they weren't after her. And she happened to travelling with him in the context of, of, of trying to earn a living. Uh, but uh, uh, I think that during that time, there was an attempt to, to build... Or, or he may have tried to take advantage of her to protect himself. Or, or yeah. Uh, yeah. Many things exactly. could have happened. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that, that at that point of time, uh, the, an attempt was to build an image of larger than life image of Mr. Modi as being uh, this most 56 inch broad uh, uh, ch chest, uh, chested uh, defender of Hindu uh, uh, you know, interests in a in, in a context which is uh, hostile and uh, and uh, pro minority, I think right. there was that attempt as well, yeah. and therefore uh, the at the time when the incident happened, it was barely two years after the Gujarat massacre. Right. So 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 at that time, I'm, uh, people want to forget, but I think that Mr. Modi remained yeah. extremely aggressive in his uh, anti minority, right. anti Muslim yeah. rhetor rhetoric till about a year before uh, he, he he became. Uh, uh, a national uh, right. figure and this was all part of that scenario in which right. he was being built up as somebody who was defending the interests of the Hindus uh, and uh, and paying uh, you know uh, risking his life doing it okay hmm? uh, is there any other question that you want okay um, Madhusudan Sundar Raj asks hmm. uh, we have seen a lot of sensational revelations by former NHA Babus and Intel officials in news channels in the last six months, this at a time when the matter is still sub -judice. Do you think it's an attempt to influence the court proceedings, considering Ishrat Jahan, the Ishrat Jahan case is the last nail in the coffin of uh, several top BJP leaders, or could be if the case is proven? So in other words, uh, what Madhusudan is asking is designed to ensure that the case never gets to trial. I have a feeling that it is in, in order to create a, a, a sort of a, a larger popular moral uh, context uh, uh, in which uh, you know courts don't also sadly function mm. uh, you know I independent of public opinion is to create a kind of public opinion which justifies in some way uh, the killing uh, and because i think that if there's if there is a, a case simply about whether it was an encounter killing or, or a genuine uh, encounter killing or a fake one uh, it's very unlikely that even a biased court can actually absolve them. All. So it will it will only be in the way, as I was describing in a rape case, where you sort of divert uh, to people's character and motives and so on, that there's some evidence of of, of okay. diverting the court. So there was a question from Durga Bhanu who asks about the consequences for the trial, were it ever to happen, mm. of the fact that senior police officers who were involved mm. in the Ishrat Jaha case and who have been charge sheeted like uh, Pandey, for example, have been reinstated and in some ways mm. are going to be uh, are running the show there. Uh, how <laughs> compromised might uh, a trial be uh, were it ever to be held even? Yeah, I mean, I think it's appalling what we are watching uh, happening. I mean, you have a director general of police uh, is a person who is out on bail, uh, charged with murder in his official capacity. Uh, and becomes the director general of police during that bail period. Uh, what uh, message does that give? And, and officers who stood up for justice, like Rahul Sharma, etc., have are facing, uh, and, and many others, Satish Shah and Rajneesh and, and others, are facing all, all sorts of uh, disciplinary proceedings discipline for, for uh, if, uh, relatively minor misdemeanors compared to the. Or no misdemeanors at all. I mean, with Rahul Sharma, it was really about sharing that, that right. tape. Uh, and so why did he leak? Why did he leak? Why did he leak? Why did he leak it? Whereas he said that he has to stand on the side of justice, and yeah. therefore he placed the evidence. So, so, uh, so we're witnessing a, a situation in which, uh, uh, you know, uh, all I, I've seen that every single officer 
was released on bail if they were uh, serving officers they have been not only been reinstated they've been promoted and they've been given good official positions mm. uh, if they are retired like wanzara they are received like heroes so 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 what are we witnessing obviously we are uh, seeing a completely vitiated uh, atmosphere right. being created right. uh, for any kind of investigation connected with not just uh, uh, these encounter killings but also uh, you know uh, justice for yeah. the survivors of the 2000 no, Harsh, you're Kanesh. not saying that people like pandey or others should not have got bail i guess bail is an entitlement mm -hmm. it's the reinstatement in duty that, you, that you find uh, problematic i i find I do I find I do find the selectivity of bail okay. uh, still a problem. I mean, uh, let us remember that you know we are witnessing a series of people uh, charged with terror crimes uh, who have not been given a, a single day's bail, and you find, uh, of course, Yakub Menon had didn't have a single day's bail for 21 years, mm -hmm. but we have uh, Amir uh, and various others mm -hmm. being released after 14 years with no bail, and then been declared as innocent mm -hmm. i feel that if bail is a right then it has to be a right across right. Uh, i mean whether an encounter killing uh, a killing in a communal massacre or uh, participation in in alleged participation in terror crimes how are we sort of uh, weighing each of these and saying that in all others you can get bail but not in one kind of crime mm -hmm. so i think that if we have to be consistent in our uh, uh, in 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 our approach to bail mm -hmm. but Certainly, a police officer who is charged with grave crimes and not been absolved of it should not be reinstated, and certainly should not be placed in positions of uh, of authority right. uh, which are connected with precisely the kinds of crimes for. I mean, considering that many of the uh, many of the witnesses mm. uh, in an eventual trial will be police officers who have yeah, sure. uh, given 164 statements actually that uh, <laughs> they have they were witness to or have evidence of the fact that this was an illegal no, not only that and uh, then you have power i mean uh, as a, uh, uh, the police has enormous power on the lives of yeah. vulnerable working class people especially of minorities and and so on so right. you can put all kinds of pressures right. Right. Uh, 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 there's a question from yasir who says uh, uh, why did the police feel it necessary to put on display the bodies of Vishra Jahan and the others along with the weapons and the way, the way they were, mm. you've seen the photograph. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, simply to add to that drama, I mean, right. basically, if we are creating a story about uh, the chief minister under threat from dangerous criminals and uh, brave uh, police officers who are fighting, uh, you know, both in terms of getting the intelligence on time, mm risking their lives trying to catch these dangerous terrorists and finally succeeding in in, in killing them that's the story and the the pictures actually add to the drama of that story and I, I know you're, you're more a human rights defender than a, than a political analyst as mm. it were but yes. what's the big political picture here i mean if if the bjp obviously hopes that whatever documents it says are missing once they are retrieved will show that the congress party is soft on terror. Yeah. I guess that's the narrative that uh, that they would push. Soft on terror, soft on Muslims. Muslims, exactly, or mm. Islamic terror, yeah. whatever it is. Uh, uh, but uh, were the case to be put on trial, right. proceed on trial, and it's been hanging fire for two years now, mm. and were the CBI's charge sheet to be validated by the court, in other words, were the court to then uphold the fact that this was a fake encounter, mm. how do you think that would uh, affect the political fortunes? of the BJP president, Mr. Amit Shah, who was Home Minister of Gujarat then, mm. and of course, uh, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, who was Chief Minister of Gujarat then. See, what I've observed in these matters is that uh, when you've communalized issues sufficiently, uh, then it's a heads I win, tails you lose kind of uh, situation. So, uh, whether they are indicted or not uh, for criminal action, uh, the larger scenario of people who are, uh, that the Hindu is persecuted despite being a majority uh, in the majority in this country by political parties which appease minorities is the scenario that they are uh, that they are uh, that they're playing out right. and so i think it's a heads i win i mean regardless of the outcomes uh, it only further reinforces uh, uh, so uh, the reinforces the the larger politics that they're playing out which is which is not that uh, that that this is a secular democracy, that uh, that the, the minorities in this country, along with many other impoverished groups, face continuous injustice, they instu face institutional bias, they, they face poverty. Uh, the governments, successive governments, including the Congress, have not done 
uh, nearly enough in order to correct and ensure justice. That is not the scenario that, uh, that, uh, that, that, uh, that they are uh, standing by. They are creating a different scenario in which very strangely, I mean, I feel that, that the scenario that, that the BJP is building up and has built up for a long time is that it is not the minorities that are persecuted by the majority, but the majority which is somehow persecuted by the minorities and those who support them. It is not the poor who are oppressed in our country, it is the middle class who are being oppressed by uh, parties which are trying to sort of buy votes by speaking on behalf of the poor. So there is this strange moral inversion that we are watching in the public discourse in which all of this is part. Well, thank you very much for putting this entire murky episode in, uh, in, a, in a broader context. Uh, it's been really great having you here. Thank you. Well, uh, whether this is uh, about the BJP or the Congress, Hindu or Muslim, it's very clear that the Ishtar Jahan case is really about a fundamental and basic fact. The police said that she, along with three other people, were killed in what they said was a, an actual encounter. Uh, the family members of Ishtar Jahan and uh, uh, Javed uh, deny this. The SIT and the CBI uh, constituted under uh, supervision of the Supreme Court uh, tended to find, tended to validate what Ishra Jahan's mother had been saying all along. And there is a, an actual criminal case for murder against uh, senior Gujarat police officers uh, in, uh, you know, for, the, for the custodial killing of, of Ishra Jahan. This case has been hanging fire for two years. Uh, before the CBI uh, Special Court in Ahmedabad. Uh, perhaps one way to cut through the uh, enormous amount of confusion caused by this debate on affidavits being changed, papers being missing, whether the Congress is soft on, uh, on, on terrorism or whether the BJP is uh, uh, trying to hide the truth, the best way to cut through this entire uh, confusion is for the trial to go ahead. Uh, and for the Supreme Court to take steps to ensure that the trial is held uh, in an atmosphere uh, free from any kind of pressure or coercion. Uh, it seems rather hard to think of how that could be when senior Gujarat police officers indicted in the Ishwar Jahan case hold uh, positions of authority, but uh, this is something that the courts will have to deliberate over, have to consider. If you've been watching this uh, Facebook Live episode of The Wire on the Ishwar Jahan case. Uh, thank you very much for joining and do keep watching uh, The Wire's Facebook page for updates uh, in this case and of course on other issues. Thank you.